Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Morgan and today I'm going to be talking about the NCLEX. The NCLEX is the National Licensure Exam to become a registered nurse. I recently graduated nursing school and after that I kind of took a week off of all things nursing and then kind of began studying a week later. So I graduated May 14th and I scheduled my NCLEX for originally July 7th and I kind of realized that that was just a little bit too late and too far out of nursing school for me to take it. So I kind of reevaluated and looked at my study plan and I rescheduled it for almost a month earlier, which was June 9th. So it's been about a week now since I have taken it. And I'm kind of going to tell you guys just a little bit about everything that I did to prepare for the NCLEX, my feelings before, my feelings after what I thought the NCLEX was like, kind of all things NCLEX. So with that being said, let's just get started. So with my school, they had us start Kaplan, which is like NCLEX prep, back in March. I had to take like the diagnostic test, all of the QTs, sample tests, and everything like that, and remediate everything. But I felt like, honestly, during nursing school, I was more focused on getting through nursing school than the NCLEX. So Kaplan didn't have my undivided attention. And obviously, yes, I tried, but everything was too crammed together for me that I didn't really get as much out of it that I should have. I didn't have time to remediate everything and if I did it was like super quick and I wasn't retaining the information that I missed. So it wasn't very focused for me to be honest. When school ended and I started back up, I looked at my Kaplan stuff again and I kind of went back through it. So for my NCLEX, the minimum number of questions that you could have with like COVID rules right now and everything is 75 and maximum is 145. And I decided to retake all the QTs that were up to 150 questions. So I didn't take QT6, which I think is 200. And I didn't take QT7, which is 265. Cause I'm like, I'm never gonna have to take that. Why would I even do that anyways? So I'm not gonna sit there and exhaust myself. So I decided to retake QT1 through five. And then I did the sample tests again, because they're short, they're like max of 50 questions each. I took predictor A previously during school, so I didn't retake that because I did get above a 60%, and on Kaplan above a 60% is good. But I did later take predictor B, readiness A, and cat 3 as kind of like my new gauge to see where I was at. and be most realistic to the NCLEX with new questions that I hadn't seen before. And other than that, I did do QBank questions. Usually if I did QBank, I would just do the maximum I could do 75 questions a day if I didn't do a different test. That's all the testing that I did. When I first started studying, I looked at Kaplan's channel for crucial content videos and there's like eight videos that are about an hour and I reviewed all of those. There's like fundamentals, med surge, maternal health, peds, psych. There's like a few others. There's like short burst videos too that if you struggle in certain areas, you can watch those. But I didn't want to do that because honestly, the way my mind works is if I start doing a specific type of content, then I feel like I have to do everything. I didn't want to wrap myself up in that. So I just did the crucial content videos as content review and then pretty much all those tests that I did. I did study from, I started May 23rd and I was done June 8th, like the day before my test. So that kind of leads me to my first thing is that a lot of people say the day before the NCLEX don't study. And if you're anything like me, you just can't sit still and can't do that because even in nursing school, like you study the day before, you know, and you don't have to cram. If you have to do something the day before to not go crazy, <laughs> then do it because I feel like it just adds a little bit of peace to your mind. So what I ended up doing to not overwhelm myself, but do a little bit was 15 questions of QBank about like every two hours. And I ended up doing 90 questions throughout the day. 
and my average score was like 62. And I was very happy with that the day before. So that's all I did. So like my first week kind of looked like watching a lecture and then taking a QT. Once I finished the lectures, I would just continue to take questions and remediate and look over my previous notes. So a couple days before, I would just do 75 question Q banks, remediate and look over content. And then the day before, I just did 15 question Q banks with remediation. So that is what helped me. I did wanna to say too that I didn't finish all of Kaplan Q Bank. I had like 1400 left to do when I went in to take the NCLEX. So I hadn't seen all the questions. I don't know all of my scores off the top of my head, but if you guys would like me to post my scores, that helps you guys, I can definitely do that. I did not use anything other than Kaplan. I didn't use Mark Klemek. I didn't use UWorld, which is what I was seeing that a lot of people do. So I was kind of like, oh, like if I fail, maybe I can do the Mark Klemek lectures and do more Q Banks and that's that. And surprisingly, I didn't really have trouble sleeping because I took a melatonin for three nights before the day of my NCLEX. So I was able to get to sleep, thank God, because I know that if anything, I just needed good sleep. My test was on the Thursday. So Tuesday night, I was super anxious for some reason, more anxious than Wednesday. But Wednesday, I did my little Q-Banks and just tried to relax and do things for me and work out. And that was fine. And then Thursday morning, my test was actually at one o'clock. So I was at my boyfriend's house and he gets up at like 6.30 for work. So I got up at 6.30 on Thursday morning and left around seven with him. So then I got home and I ate breakfast. I was like, I just need to eat. I need to fuel myself. I need to drink water, drink fluids. And then I just got ready. I did my makeup and tried to just relax and do things to get my mind off of it. And it got to the point where I just needed to find things to do to distract myself because I just had too much time on my hands. I was just like trying to get the time to go faster. I was just like on my phone and on TikTok. I do have a few clips from Thursday about my thoughts and what I was feeling. Today is my NCLEX day. Kaplan says I've done like 2400 questions and I think that's like close to the recommended amount to study for the NCLEX but obviously like there's no right answer so you're just gonna do questions till you feel ready enough and it's also like when do you ever really feel ready enough how much studying is enough and it's different for everybody because it's not all about quantity sometimes it's just the quality of your studying honestly I feel like what really helps is kind of changing your mindset honestly to being like oh like i want to learn and i'm doing these q banks because whatever extra information i can gain is great for the nclex you know like you're not stressing yourself out and honestly i didn't stress out yesterday it's like you want it to be hard but because the questions are advancing not because you're not prepared and like you want it to be easy because you're well prepared not because you're getting the lower level questions, if that makes any sense. You just have to go in confident that you know these test taking strategies. And so that's kind of where my mindset is at right now. You can honestly get the questions that are like slightly above the level of competency and they are kind of easier and you're just kind of like hovering that, but it's still a pass. So it's not like, you know, exponential, but you can't overthink that because <laughs> you just can't. It's not trying to screw you over. It wants you to be a nurse. It wants you to pass. It wants you to be above that line. It just can't if you're not. So we will see. I'm like always early to everything. So to be there at 12.15 and a half an hour away, I'm gonna leave at 11.30. That's literally like an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. I've been so anxious just these past few hours just waiting and I feel like I can't eat anything. So I'm just trying to eat something right now because I know that's what's good for my body. And I'm seeing these TikToks about like how people just took the NCLEX, like before the NCLEX, like looking anxious and then after just crying. And I'm just wondering if I'm gonna cry after it cause I feel so bad about it. I don't know, I don't know how I'm gonna feel. But I, I'm trying to stay positive. I'm always like in life, I just try to go through things positively. That's why I'm not gonna know how, how I did. I'm really just not gonna know because I'm gonna just try to tell myself I did good. But I could also feel bad. Maybe it's good if I feel bad about it because I usually feel good. I don't know, I don't know. I'm just trying to distract myself right now because the anxiety is the worst part. You gotta just change your mindset too to feel better and 
I'm just telling myself, like, I'm excited to take the NCLEX. Like, I'm ready to prove everything that I know, which deep down I am, but the anxiety is, is covering it a little bit. Although I'm anxious to take it, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what the questions are finally like. I'm excited to have my own opinion on it and not just what everyone else is saying. My mom even caught like a video of me just moving back and forth because I was just so anxious and I had nothing to do. I just want to do that. And I gotta be in the right mindset, confidence. What you doing? Me? Yeah. Are you recording me? No. Yes, you are. No, no. I know. Why are you holding me? The testing center was about 30 minutes away and you're supposed to be there a half an hour before your start time. So I wanted to get there at 1230. So I just wanted to leave at like 1145 just to get to that time earlier. I wanted to get there more at like 1215. So we even left like earlier than that. My mom actually ended up taking me so I didn't have to drive and I could kind of just decompress in the car. To be honest, like I wanted to film that day too. Like I filmed the videos before and I wanted to film me going there and my dad picking me up after, but I was just so anxious that day that the last thing I wanted to do was take my phone out. You know, you kind of just need to take a step back and relax. So that's what I did that day. I kind of just reclined the seat back and closed my eyes and tried to calm down. We got there literally like 12 o'clock, like an hour before my start time. They took my ID, they checked me off, they took my phone, got me a locker and sent me back and I was good to go. So I got to start my test at like, I want to say it was like 12.45, but I didn't look at the exact time. For those of you that don't know, the NCLEX is adaptive, which means each question you get is based off your answer to the previous question. So if you're preparing or about to take the NCLEX, I'm sure you have all heard this. There's this line, it's called the level of competency. And you have to answer the questions that are passing level questions above that line correctly. And the NCLEX is zero wadgets. I think that's how you say it. So it means that you have to answer questions correctly 50% of the time to pass. In simplified terms, that's what that means. So the lines here, I don't know what kind of question it is really, but if you get a question right, you go up. And if you get a question wrong, you go down. So the goal is to just stay above this level of competency and keep answering the questions correctly so you have room to miss them and you don't want to get below the line because then it's harder to come up. So it's very complex and there's a lot of factors that go into it being adaptive. I think, to be honest, this is why people get in their heads the most is because it is adaptive and it literally adapts to you and learns what you know and what you don't know. Even like if you get a question wrong, it typically tries to ask you that similar question again to see what you actually know in a different way. So I was taking my test and I honestly felt like it was easy, but then I started getting in my head like, well, is it easy because they're not passing level questions? So that kind of worried me, but I just kept answering them and I felt confident about all my answers. So I was like, that's, that's the best way I could feel right now. I was like, there's no way this test isn't gonna shut off at 75. I'm getting all of these correct. I just feel like it. I got to 75 and I was like, okay, this could be my last question. I felt like I got it right and it went on to 76. And I was like, that's okay. I've had practice adaptive tests. It could shut off in the middle of 75 and 145. And if it does, I'd be happy with that. So I kept taking the test. I keep answering like them to the best of my ability. I got a little bit quicker at it than I was in the beginning. Cause in the beginning I was really slow, like spending my time on each question, making sure that this was right. And I knew that throughout the test, like I'd get more comfortable and kind of go a little bit quicker. I think around a question 120 something, I was offered that two hour break. And I thought my test shut off, but it was just the break. I declined the break. <laughs> I didn't take any breaks during this test because I just I wanted the next question. I wanted to keep going. I was in the zone, you know? And honestly, my anxiety like did decrease once I got there. Like my heart rate was normal. I felt comfortable taking the test. It was really the anticipation that got me really anxious earlier in the day. And even days prior, my test kept going. And I was like, oh my gosh, like by the time I'm at 130, I was like, I'm going all the way, I guess. My test did shut off at 145. That's when I started overthinking for four reasons. One, I felt like the exam was easy and in combination with it going to 145 questions, I felt that they were below passing level questions and it kept needing more from me, so it went all the way. So I got in my head about that and 
My last question, I know for a fact that I got wrong because it was a select all and I looked up some of the content later and I was like, yeah, I got that wrong. So if you're right here on the competency line, you need to answer that last question correctly to get you above and it could be your deciding factor if you pass or fail. And that I felt like the last question was an easy below passing level question. I just didn't know the content that I felt like I should have known. I felt like that I failed. The thing about that is if it wasn't an adaptive test, I would have so walked out of that test so confidently, but because it was adaptive and literally all those reasons leading up to the end of my exam, that's what made me feel so bad about it. <laughs> and one of the Kaplan instructors, she's the one who told us that your last question could decide if you pass or fail. And they should stop saying that because man, does that get in your head? Like, please stop telling people that because there are so many situations and so many different things that could happen that we need to stop being in our head over one freaking question for real. It did end up taking me like three-ish hours to take the exam. I ended up walking out and I didn't feel like a buildup of emotions, like I was gonna cry or anything or upset. I was just kind of like, okay, I, I did what I could do. I, I don't know how great I feel about it because of the whole adaptive process. I got everything and I went to the bathroom, just kind of got situated. I think it was like 3.30 when I walked out and I got the confirmation email that my exam was submitted right after I left the testing center. And my dad picked me up and he was kind of like, oh, so how'd you do? You know, when people ask you that and you're kind of feeling down. I didn't like bawl or anything, but I shed a tear, it was like, I don't know, I honestly don't know what to think because I, I don't know if they were passing level questions or not. And that's what's so hard about the NCLEX is that it's so subjective. Even if you look this up, like on the NCSBN website, they're like, you don't really know. You don't have the capability of knowing which questions are passing level and which aren't because it's all tailored to you. So maybe, maybe that select all was a passing level question and I just, don't know. I did get a question like it earlier in the exam. Maybe I got it wrong and they were trying to, to pick it out of me and then I got it wrong again. I don't know. Then I read too somewhere that select dolls aren't always considered passing level. So that got me in my head. <laughs> so I really don't know how I did. So honestly, there was nothing I could do. I actually took the test at Dylan, my boyfriend's work because he's, he's in this like office building and there's a bunch of, you know, companies that work out of there. Pearson View was one of them. And so is his company, so that was pretty cool. I got to see him right before my exam. My stomach started hurting because I didn't eat as much as I should have before the exam because I physically couldn't. My boyfriend gets out of work at four. We ended up waiting for him to get out of work and then we went right across the street to Winking Lizard. And because I got the confirmation email, I did the Pearson View trick right away. And honestly, I didn't know, I didn't decide if I was gonna do the Pearson View trick at first. But I did end up doing it just because like I felt confident, but I also didn't. So I just wanted to see what it would say. A little bit of background about the Pearson View trick. You try to re-register for the NCLEX. And essentially, if it lets you, that's a bad pop-up because it's trying to let you re-register so it's processed that you failed. Or it says, you recently scheduled this exam, we can't schedule another one for you at this time. That's the good pop-up. So. If you type in a wrong credit card number or change your last credit card number by one or two digits, it's always going to say that your payment was not accepted, okay? And that's not the bad pop-up. You have to type in your actual credit card and you can only change the expiration date or the CVV or both for it to actually attempt the process correctly. Like the first time I did the Pearson View trick, I changed my actual credit card and I tried to process it and then I was like, okay, like I'm gonna try to make this more real. And I did look it up and you are supposed to put your actual credit card number. So with your actual credit card number, which pop-up you get, I submitted that and it said like, sorry, you can't schedule another exam. So I got the good pop-up. I was doing the Pearson View trick at like the Winking Lizard and constantly <laughs> refreshing. And I kept typing it in throughout the day when it would expire and it got to like five, six hours after. And I was like, okay, I feel better about it. It's still showing the good pop-up. And even like one time before bed, I typed in the wrong credit card again, like on purpose, just to see if I got the same pop-up and it was. So whether you pass or failed, it's always going to say your credit card was wrong if you type in the wrong credit card. 
So after we ate at the Winking Lizard, my boyfriend just took me to my mom's house and we kind of just got home and he was like, oh, do you want to go to get frozen yogurt as like a celebration for taking your test? And I was like, no, I don't really feel like doing anything to be honest, because I don't really know how to feel right now. So we just got there and just wanted to lay down. I was exhausted from the anxiety earlier in the day, the mental exhaustion from taking the test and I was like, I, I just wanna lay down. I'm exhausted in every single way possible. I just was kinda on my phone. I was looking up about every link there is about the NCLEX. I swear to God, if you look up NCLEX, anything on my phone, every link is purple because I viewed everything. Like days up to the test, like was the NCLEX easy or hard for you? Did you pass with this? Like everything I've looked up. I looked for comfort in other people's experiences. So, there was this one girl who posted on allnurses.com. She said that she got 145 questions and she got a select all at the end of her exam. And she was like, it was easy. And she got home and found out that she got the last question wrong because she looked it up. She was like in tears because you get in your head about this adaptive thing and getting that last question right. And that's like the same thing I felt that happened to me. And she said that she ended up passing. I found security in that. I almost left it at that. And just throughout the night, just kept checking Pearson View. And I also kept checking my license on Ohio Board of Nursing. Like, is it updated yet? And it always says APP before you take the exam when you're eligible. And then it will say RN when you passed. I kept refreshing both of those pages like all night until I could go to bed. And then when I finally laid down to go to bed, I kept thinking of questions that I'd answered and I was like, oh, did I get that one right or did I get that one wrong? And like, I'd pick up my phone and look it up and I was like, I just need to go to bed. It ended up being like close to 11.30 and I was like, I need to stop picking up my phone. I think I took an all time that I don't know. I don't know if I took one that night too, but I was just so tired that honestly, I probably didn't even need it. I went to bed. My boyfriend woke up at 6.30 and I kind of woke up a little bit. I crossed my mind. I was like, should I just check my phone? I was like, no, I'm gonna sleep. I need to go to bed. I went to bed later last night. I need, I need sleep. So I went back to bed and I was almost in this like, vivid like daydream but I was dreaming it was super weird and I had a dream of the scenario that could have happened if I didn't go back to bed so I was dreaming here I am just picture me dreaming <laughs> I'm not awake and I grab my phone from the nightstand and I go look at my license and it says RN and before my boyfriend walks out of the room I go babe I'm an RN and he just grabs me and hugs me and he was so happy and we were so excited and the excitement that I felt from that dream woke me up and I was like it was literally the exact scenario that could have happened and I was like now I have to check and so I open my phone and I refresh it's like 6 45 in the morning and it says RN next to my name and I was alone in this room like with no one to tell and I was so excited I got up and I don't sleep, you know, like we sleep in oversized shirts and underwear, whatever. And so I'm scrambling with my phone in my hand trying to find where the heck I put my pants. And I throw them on and I open the door like this, like probably so hard <laughs> that it shook the house. And Dylan turns around and he's like, and I'm like, I'm an RN, I'm an RN, like how I said it in my dream. And he gave me the biggest hug the biggest like bear hug that I've ever felt. I'll never forget it, it was so cute. Somehow, some way, I passed. And I am so grateful that I passed because you start to, you know, you don't wanna get your hopes up when you're waiting too. Like if you don't pass, you're like, you know, I can wait 45 days and, and take it again. You know, that's like end of July, August and start work then. Cause I have a job lined up and I, I did want to start working like end of July and August and it still would have lined up with my NCLEX, but that would have put a lot of pressure on me for the next time that I'd have to pass. So I was so grateful that I passed. It's a big relief and big stress off of me. And now I'm just kind of focused on moving out here. And this is my college house and probably the last time you guys will see me filming here, which is absolutely crazy. I don't know if you can tell, but all my stuff in my room is kind of cleared out except my tapestry, my lights, my TV, and that vanity that's mine and my bedding. But everything like my closet over here is empty all my stuff here is empty so it was thursday when i took my exam and then i went to my college house on saturday it was like my big move out day with my boyfriend he helped 
and then I came back yesterday to get more stuff. That's pretty much all I have left back there. So honestly, the reason I wanted to make this video is because if I can be a person that helps somebody else and give peace of mind, comfort, security, and however your exam turned out, even just for one person, that's my goal because I found that in some of the written posts that I was able to find online. My biggest, biggest advice, which may not be much because we all do it, but is to not overthink the adaptive testing. You've spent, I don't know, two to four years learning this stuff. Have that confidence, go into the test with that confidence because you know this stuff. Don't let the next day be consumed by all of these overwhelming thoughts. That was pretty much all I had to tell you guys. I hope I covered everything because I feel like it was just such a whirlwind. Hopefully I was able to help you guys in some way. So yeah, like always, if you guys have any questions, if there's something I left out and you guys wanna know or anything that I didn't talk about, feel free to drop a comment down below and I will get back to that as soon as I see it. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm almost at 600, so I'm super excited about that and I definitely wanna make more videos once I start my job as a nurse. So I'm going to focus on those two things. I'm very excited for that. I'll see you guys in my next video. And so I'm at my boyfriend's house. Jeez. I have a job lined up and 